Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. One thing I absolutely positively know for sure, today is the day the Lord's made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And that's the one thing I know. One thing I know for sure, because the Lord has made today. The Lord has opened a way for us. To, God has opened a way for us to come to Him directly. We come boldly before the throne room of God. We don't have to cowardly do anything. We don't have to come out here and build a great big altar and kill a goat, kill a sheep, kill a bull. We don't have to kill no pigeons, no doves, no you know, we don't have to do that stuff no more because thank the praise the Lord. God our Heavenly Father sent his Son to be the sacrifice of all sacrifices. As he drew his final breath, he said, It is finished. And that it is. It is finished. Well, bear with me. I mean, we've, you know, we've been, I don't know, you guys know we've been having the times. And. Anyway, praise the Lord. Today's the day to like I say, today's the day the Lord's made. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad. Regardless of what the enemy tries to bring against us, regardless of what the world tries to bring against us, there's no power. You know, in Romans 8, it says there's no power above the earth, on this earth, and inside this earth that separates from the love of God. They may try to separate us, but they just can't do it. They may come and hinder us, slow us down, distract us, deceive us into believing lies. And there's nothing that any of these powers and so forth can do to separate us from the love of God. Um, good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Gloria. I don't know. I've, <clears throat> this has been, like I say, this has been a time. And I ask you guys to bear with us. I haven't. Just having to depend on uh, now, it's just where we're at. You know, we have to get to the point at times. It comes a point in our time in our life where we just at different times where we just have to depend upon the Holy Spirit for for everything. I don't know, I may ramble on this morning some. I don't know, I haven't been. I just know I need us all to I need us all to be together. That's for sure. These days are coming. And the enemy tries more and more to separate us and bring division amongst the people. And there's so much division and stuff going on within the churches today. It's just unreal. And, but you know, we still all need to be together. We're one body. We all have different parts. We all, we're just one body. And we need to hold each other up. And I mean, and I know, I mean, I, I can see here, well, we got things going here on the, uh, oh, there's Audrey. Good morning to you, Audrey. And, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me. So 
go in. Right? Mm. I've had a couple, two or three things that were going on through my mind here this morning, and uh, yeah, go for it. Huh? Go for it. Go for it. All right, Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for being with us. We love you. You're mighty. You're gracious. You're the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And then, in all that we do, we pray that we bring you glory. We bring you. We pray that we bring you glory, Jesus. We bring glory to your life because you glorify the Father. And Father, in all that we do, whether it be in word or in deed, let us bring glory to you. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. You always were. You always are right now. And you always will be the same. You never change. You're the Lord God Almighty. Father, I just ask that you, that you bring your word, your Holy Spirit. Fill this place, fill this room. Fill our home, fill the homes of everyone listening. And we do, we bind up all powers of witchcraft. There should be no witchcraft come against us. There's no hindrance. There's no distractions. There's no offense. Only the words of the Holy Spirit that come to speak truth and to bring life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And I talk a whole lot about, now I don't have these scriptures, I'm going to speak here, I don't have them written down, so I don't have no scripture list to go by this morning, so I'm going to speak it, and maybe Michelle can find some things here, post into the chat, but anyway, you know, I speak all the time, and I just said it. We're a body of Christ, and I talk about how we need to be together and come together. And, you know, I hear people all the time say, you know, if we're not in a religion. We praise the Lord no longer. And I said there a while ago, you know, we don't have to bring goats. We don't have to bring sheep. We don't bring a calf. We don't bring doves. We don't slaughter the bull and lay it on the altar. And... There are other religions that do so. There are, you know, in the occult even, there are the blood sacrifices and all that, but praise the Lord, Jesus became the blood sacrifice for us. But anyway, as I was going to say, we uh, have times where, and I, I just said it there to begin with, you know, we need to be together. And I totally, totally get that. And we do. And the Holy Spirit will bring people across in our thoughts and in our minds. Just all of a sudden, it's clear out of the blue. Man, we need to be praying for this person. Because there's something going on in their life. And we need to pray. There are times, generally when I go to bed at night, man, I'm out. Until my bladder wakes me up. But then I go back to bed and I'm out again. And... But there are certain times, man, I can go to sleep and be sleeping. And then a few hours later, a couple of hours into sleep, all of a sudden, boing, eyes wide open. And I lay there and I'll, of course now, I'm now not doing this out of selfishness. It's just because we have tax. Good morning, Elizabeth. And we have we have spirit, we have tax come against us. We have witchcraft come against us. We have demonic tax, which is, uh, witchcraft come against us. And uh, Jesus said, standing there, at, standing there in Caesarea Philippi, you know, he, he said, the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Well, the gates of hell come against us. Well, I've told you guys all time and time again. And when we come to the Lord, it's like in the spirit realm, and we got a big bullseye on our back. And these things do come against us, and they, it's a battle. 
there wasn't a battle. Everything was all nice and peaceful, like a lot of these different people believe that once you come to Christ, man, everything's over. Your whole life is going to revolve around sugar plum drops and unicorns and all of this kind of stuff, and you're going to live in this little kumbaya land and everything. And it ain't the way it is. That's the way it was when you was in the world, man. You was getting everything in the world you wanted. You was getting all of the drugs. You was getting all of the alcohol. You was getting all the sex. You was getting all of the everything in the world that you wanted. You was living in that land of unicorns and sugar plums and lollipops and all that kind of stuff. You know? But yes, we have a promise of life. But not just life of this world, but life everlasting. Whereas, man, if we're sitting here getting, looking at the unicorns around the corner and filling our bellies full of lollipops and all this kind of stuff, man, or uh, just ain't gonna happen. So there's death coming around the corner. But anyway, trying to get back to where I was out here. <laughs> I apologize, everybody. I'm having issues with my washing machine. Yeah, our washing machine's having a problem this morning. I fixed it. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. It sounds to me like it's doing it right now. That thing was trying to spin, and as soon as it would start spinning, <laughs> it would start bouncing, and then it would shut itself off. And then it'd try to spin again the other direction, and it'd start bouncing and shut itself off. But anyway, she must have rebalanced it or something. I don't know. But... I hear it work, and the that sucker's are spinning like crazy. Praise the Lord for that. But anyway, see, it never ends. I mean, there's always something, you know, to draw our mind and our attention and our focus away from the, thing. Away from the Lord God Almighty. Just keep talking. Huh? Just keep talking. Okay. But anyway, yeah, pay attention, chap. Chael's adding two cents worth to. She may even speak up every now and then. Today yeah. <laughs> but anyway, where I was trying to get at, we are the body of Christ. Let no unwholesome words come from your mouth, but only words for the building up and the edification and the building up of the body of Christ. Ephesians 4.29. But anyway, oh yeah, back to where I was at. Well, I go, how am I? I lay there, I'll wake up. Fine, wait, wait. And I'm not doing this out of selfishness. And as soon as I wake up, I, somebody's under attack. I know this for a fact. When I get woke up in the middle of the night, somebody's under attack. So, not out of selfishness. Believe me, I'm going to extinguish the fires here in our house so that I am able to take care of fires somewhere else. You know, it's like I heard someone speaking one time and they said, you know, you're in an airplane. You know, you're a mother, you're in an airplane. You got your three kids sitting right there beside you. All of a sudden the plane starts going down, you know, and all of this kind of stuff. The little oxygen masks fall down out of the out of the ceiling. Who do you put the oxygen mask on? Do you put it on yourself? You put it on the oldest kid, the middle kid, the baby kid, you know. Who gets the oxygen mask first? The right answer, the true answer? is you put the oxygen mask on yourself. Because if you run out of oxygen, putting it on all your kids, you're not going to save all your kids, you're not even going to save yourself. All right? So there comes a time to where, yes, we have to be selfish, if that's what you want to call it. Because it's not selfish. It's enabling us to help other people. So when I wake up in the middle of the night at times, the first thing I do is I pray, man, I pray you fence around our house. I, I bind, I cast out, I extinguish all of the fiery darts that could be coming against us. Because I'm uh, here, I've been asleep. I don't know what's going on. Snoozing away, minding my own business. Uh, so here I am, snoozing away. I get woke up, wide awake, boing, I know the Lord got something for me. And most of the time, at that time of night, is during the witching hours, you know, anywhere from midnight to three o'clock in the morning. It's generally when I get woke up. So I know the spirit realm is thinning and somebody is under an attack. Whether it's us or whether it's somebody else, that much I do not know. <coughs> but I do know that first thing I do is I pray and I pray defenses around our home. 
I pray the offensive angels to come forth and come around our home. Good morning to you, Kelly. But anyway, I pray these things of protection around our home. First thing, because if I'm not protected, then how in the world am I going to help somebody else? So I have to protect us first thing so we can help protect others. So then after I've got everything covered, all the witchcraft that could be coming against us, and I'm saying could be, because I'm not totally for sure. All I know is I just got woke up here during the witching hours. So here I am. First thing I do is I pray against all witchcraft that could be coming against us. I pray about any demon that has snuck in through the crack in the house or something somewhere. Whatever it may be. I, I don't know. I'm Here I am. I'm asleep. I'm here I am. My eyes might be wide open, wide awake, or my mind's still kind of snoozing, you know? Kind of like in this little, you know, how it's like when you first wake up. Nobody knows anything until they get that first sip of coffee in them. Then all of a sudden the world starts coming clear. But anyway, here I am. I pray I'll get all these defenses against them. Then, Lord, I don't know who it is. I don't know where they are. But Lord, right now somebody is under attack. And I pray defense against them. I bind all powers of witchcraft. I cancel every demonic assignment against whoever this may be. And there may be times, there has been times, when the Lord will tell me, oh, uh, Elizabeth is under an attack. I'm not saying you have been Elizabeth. You may have been, may not be. I'm just tricking in the name of people that I know that are in here right now. Yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> I may pray specifically for Elizabeth to set Elizabeth free, to protect her, to bring a hedge of protection around her home, to send in the warring angels, to cancel all demonic assignments, to cancel out all powers of witchcraft, all of this, you know. I will go to war for Elizabeth. And then sometimes I don't know. It could be any single one of you guys. Or it could be anybody. And it could be anybody. It could have been somebody I went to school with that I haven't seen in 50 years, you know. I don't know who it could be. It could be somebody you don't even know. I just know that someone is under an attack. This is when the Lord wakes me up. I know a lot of people, man, I, I, I wish to, I, I don't say, I say wish, but, you know, wish is the great word. I wish the Lord would wake me up and give me a good message in the middle of the night, but you don't do that. When the Lord wakes me up in the middle of the night, it's generally an intercession for some reason or the other. It's a warfare reason. The Lord wakes me up for warfare. And that's just my relationship with me and the Lord. So anyway, that's what he wants me to do. So anyway, I pray for other people. This is after I'm sure that my house is fine. My house is in order so that I can help with other people. And like I said, this is not out of selfishness because, I mean, I can't help you if I'm having, if I'm the one having issues. So anyway, I pray and I go to war for people in the middle of the night. And I would lay there for an hour, two hours, just interceding and warring for people. And then all of a sudden, next thing I know, man, my eyes just close and I'm right back out for the rest of the night. And then I've had times, like I said, at times he gives me, the Lord gives me a name and then at times he don't. But it never fails when those times come, though. Mm -hmm. The next day, the very next day, or sometimes it may be a day or two or three later, but I will get a call or a message of somebody from somebody just out of the blue that I haven't, sometimes it's somebody I haven't heard from in weeks or months or maybe even years. I say, man, you would not believe the attack me and my family have been under. That's me and my relationship with the Lord. That's what he uses me for in the middle of the night. So anyway, that's the way it works. Now, that's what I'm saying. We need to be here. We need to be receptive to the Lord for each other. Now, the Lord may work with you in a different way than he does with me. He may bring it to the, your attention. In the, I mean, he does at times in the middle of the day, man. I'll have people, somebody, Kelly, pull you out of the half this time. Yeah. We're, not, we're not pointing fingers. Right, I'm not pointing fingers at nobody. 
not but there may be t- there may be a day, man. I get up in the morning and I'm out here doing my own thing, and all of a sudden Kelly just comes to my mind. You know, it's going about the one other. Well, all right, yeah, Kelly's a good girl, you know, so forth. And then an hour, thirty minutes, an hour later, all of a sudden something, man. Kelly starts getting a little heavier in my heart. And then an hour or two later, maybe again, you know, Kelly is just really heavy in my heart today for some reason. So what do I do? I break down and I begin praying and interceding for Kelly. And I'm not saying this is a relationship. God has called us all here where we are today and has gifted us in certain areas to where we bring these gifts and we bring all of these different attributes of ourselves as a body together to work together as a whole body. I mean, I, you know, I can get rid of my thumb and eliminate my thumb, man. I'm not going to pick things up certain very well anyway. But I use my thumb. I mean, I can grasp a hold of something good and tight. I mean, I get out there, I grab a hold of my, I call it, tell Michelle when I'm out there digging out the inside of a bowl and all that, and I'm using my ads. She goes, what are you doing? I go, I'm sitting here playing whack-a-mole. But I can't do that without my thumb. I've tried it. I've cut my thumb and tried to have my thumb off to the side and try to whack, 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 whack. My man, my little abs thing, it'll spin sideways. It don't hold tight in my hand and all that. I need my thumb to help hold it. So even though you may think you're a thumb in the body of Christ, maybe you may feel like you're the fifth wheel or whatever, you have a purpose. You have a reason. And whatever God is using you for, you may be an arm, man. You may be a, you may be a mouthpiece. You may be eyes. You know, we have watch, we have a watchman within the body of Christ. We need watchmen in the body of Christ. To a degree, every single one of us should be a watchman in the body of Christ. It's just like I'm saying, to a degree, we should all be in intercession and receptive to intercession for each other in the body of Christ. And the two greatest things, man, of all of the spiritual gifts, and I'll repeat this over and over and over again, especially the living in the day's times, we should all be praying and seeking the Holy Spirit for the gifts of wisdom and for the gifts of discernment. Those are the two gifts that, man, we should desperately, each individually, and I'm, on, I'm talking today on some individual individualities, okay? I mean, yes, we bring these individualities together in the body of Christ. Now then, I was looking it up here on my phone, which I can't get to it right now, because if I do that, then we lose you. What are you I looking? lose you. Huh? What were you looking at? So what I'm going to get at is it comes a point in time where I'm going to have, well, hang on a sec. Well, yes, I speak a lot about us being coming together corporately of one mind, one accord, as a body of Christ. And that's what I've been trying to lead, talk, you know, that's what I've been saying here anyway. I hope that's what I'm getting at. But anyway, there also comes a time, it's like I said, when we pull the oxygen, when the oxygen mask fall, fall down, mother, you put the mask on yourself and then you put the mask on your children. Because you're not going to save all your children if you don't take care of yourself first. Now then, I want to say this was in Luke, is where I was, Luke 5, is where I was reading it a while ago. But anyway, it says, oftentimes, Jesus would walk away into the, he would go to places alone to pray. There comes points and times. You know, we all the time, everybody throws this up all the time. Oh, I've not been a religion. It's a relationship, which it is. We need to have this relationship, a personal relationship with me and Jesus, with you and Jesus. It needs to be a personal time. And Jesus, as the scripture says, oftentimes Jesus would walk away from even his disciples, his close ones, his people that were close to him. There comes a point in time 
and there comes time and we should be doing this. I'm not saying often. I'm not saying this weekly. I'm not putting a religious set down time in. The devil, he wants the one who wants to bring that to you religiously. He wants to come into your mind and tell your mind saying, oh no, you're not spending enough time alone with Jesus in prayer. But I'm saying that you do. You do need to spend some time alone with Jesus in prayer. As Do you need to mark your calendar that I need to spend every single Thursday just me and Jesus in prayer? No, you don't need to do that. That's getting religious. Do I understand my saying that you need to spend from noon to one o'clock every day in prayer, just you and Jesus? No, I'm not saying that either. Because Jesus didn't do it. It said Jesus did it often. So, <clears throat> that's right, Gloria. You're right. And that's the way we are too. You know, people will, well, Jesus cast demons out right then and there. Well, guess what, people? I'm not Jesus. I can be there. I can be in Jesus' name. And Jesus can work through me and the Holy Spirit work through me and I can cast a demon out of somebody. But it may because take me Jesus. five hours. Because of Jesus. But I'm not Jesus. I am. I am, but I ain't. Does that make sense? Yes, I have the power of Jesus flowing through me. Yes, I have Jesus inside me. And yes, at that moment in time, if I'm casting out a demon and I'm telling that demon to leave in the name of Jesus, that demon has no choice to leave. But am I going to get rid of it just like that at the drop of a hat? Not necessarily. I mean, even Jesus, even Jesus, he went over across the sea. He gets out of the boat and right around, right off of the bat, man. Here comes this guy crazier than a Bessie bug running to him. And Jesus said, you know, Jesus knew what it was. He knew it was the demons, and he told the demon to get out. They, they go, no, we ain't leaving. Yeah, I'm legion. We're legion. For we are many. And yeah, Jesus said, get out. And they go, no, we don't want to get out. We don't want to go back. And we, don't, we definitely don't want to go to no dry and desolate places. Just put us in those pigs over there. So Jesus put them into the pigs. Uh, I'm going to get to this another time. I'm working on this one some Working on this one some more. But anyway, there was a reason why the pigs all took off and went down the hill and jumped into the ocean. And it wasn't just because the demons drove the pigs crazy either. Uh, and I could just see a whole great big herd of pigs running crazy. around down a cliff, crazier than a Bessie bug. But anyway... So, Don't you just love his crazy on the bus, Yeah. But anyway, there was a reason for this as well. And I'm going to get to that in another message. That's something I've discovered. There's a whole lot wrapped around the trip around the sea. I mean, across the sea, the storms and all that. Anyway, we'll get to that another time. Another message another day. But anyways, Jesus, yes. Even though I have Jesus living in me, even though I have Jesus working through me, even though I have the Holy Spirit power and authority and courage and all of this stuff that the Holy Spirit brings us. And the demon has no choice. I don't care what anybody, I've heard people say, man, you can't cast out marine spirits. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that that's a lie. Every evil spirit has to obey and leave at the name of Jesus. I don't care what spirit it is. Leviathan, out the window. It's gone. You're out of here. You have to obey the name of Jesus. He's talking about your Bessie bug. Uh, okay. Uh, Bessie bug. That word back with a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Bessie bug is a... Uh, you ever flip over a log and you see this little black bug It's Buried up and living inside this log. And that's a Bessie bug. Anyway, that Bessie bug, eventually, it lays its egg. 
No, never mind. Wrong bug. Yeah. But anyway, a Bessie bug, you know, when you flip that log over and that little black bug, man, he just takes off running like right, crazy. Anyway, he's exposed him. So anyway, that's a Bessie bug, and they are crazy. But anyway, but uh, I don't care what spirit it is. People say you can't cast out marine spirits. Marine spirits, I have to leave. I have to leave. Every spirit, every evil spirit has to leave the name of Jesus. That's the mention of his name. Now, like I say, I'm not Jesus. So when I tell a spirit to leave, the man, I, I'm, yeah, I can sit here and say, you spirit of whatever, up and out. Man, that spirit come out right away. That happens. And then there are some, man, these dudes, they can get very stubborn, very hard-headed, and refuse to leave. Because what do they say? They consider us as their house, as their home. And they're not going to leave their home. There's a big deal going on. I see it on the news all the time. People come in and squat in a home. So then people be gone on a trip or whatever, and they come home and find where people are squatting in their house. And it, and it just takes all kinds of stuff to get them thing, get the people out of their house, these squatters out of their house. Well, that's the way demons are sometimes with us. Sometimes it takes a lot to get them out of the house. But they do have to come out of the house. It's not their house. They may think it's their house. They may lay claim to it as being their house. And they may try to hang on to their house. And they will tell lies and deceit and all this kind of stuff. And saying that, well, this place was abandoned for five years. And I just came in, you know. No, I don't make it your house. Just like the demons do not have the right to claim you as their house. They have to go. Strictly in the name of Jesus. I'm going to I'm gonna say something real say. quick. Question. This is a question. Do y'all think that demons are attracted to people who are anointed? You'd think they'd be repelled, but I don't know. Sometimes it seems like they come from nowhere and get right in your face without warning or even anything bad going on. <laughs> I've had that happen. Okay? In fact, not too long ago. And I believe it, I believe what it is, is to distract us. I'm going to give you my answer. To distract us from the appointed times for God for us, what we have to do. If, remember, their goal is to take as many souls as they can with them. And the Bible says, if we're not careful, even the elect will be fooled. Yes, I, I don't think that they're, per se, attracted to your anointing, but you're a bright light. Yeah. And because you're a bright light, they want to snuff that light out. Mm -hmm. So, yes, ma'am. They're not <clears throat> they're afraid of you, but they're, they're, they're doing what they're told to do. They're doing because they're angry. They're doing because... They want to snuff your light because if you get out there, if it's if you ever turn out. I mean, you've been in a room. It's kind of like, it's kind of like. Um, I hate to say this, but my dad used to be in Terminex, and I'll give you this example. My dad used to be in Terminex when I was a kid, and we'd go places. And sometimes I had to go in with him because the neighborhood was pretty bad, and he didn't want to leave me out in the truck. So I'd go in with him, and we went into this one house. This lady's house was so dark, and he turned the light on. And I mean, you want to talk about roaches scattering? That's you would think that that would be the case. But at the same time, your light attracts those that need help. Your light attracts those that are wanting freedom. And the enemy will do whatever he can to try to destroy your light. So yeah, they're going to get in your face. They're going to come at you. But you got to remember this. And I, it took me a minute to learn this. Well, it does. You can just cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Remember to do that. And say, uh, 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 no, 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 get out of my face. You ain't got no business here. <clears throat> and they're going to poke you and they're going to prod you and they're going to try to cause you to sin and they're going to try to get you to do things you're not supposed to do. Been there. Trust me on this one. I mean, I, uh -huh. I shouldn't say trust me, but been there. Right off of the bat. I mean, I've probably seen <clears throat> someone one time. Does that help? said that. I hope. When the Holy Spirit comes in the room, the demons go into hiding. That's not true. I'm going to disagree with that one as well. 
right mm-hmm. off of the bat in Mark chapter 1. I mean, right there in the very first of Mark, the gospel. Jesus walked into the synagogue. And what happened? And what happened? It was the demon who spoke first. Jesus didn't say, demon, what are you doing in here in the house of God? Yeah. Jesus didn't say that. Right off of the bat, it was the demon that said, no, you're fine. No, you're not interrupting. You're not interrupting at all. Right. This is what this it is all about. It was the demon who said, right off the bat, it was the demon who said, Holy Son of God, what do you have to do with us? Demon, man, they, they know the Holy Spirit. They recognize the Holy Spirit. They recognize the Holy Spirit in you. They recognize the Holy Spirit in us all. They recognize the Holy Spirit in Jesus. And they know their days are numbered. So, but yeah, they're going to manifest in some way. I, I've, they're going to manifest. Yeah. <laughs> you have the power. You have the authority to cast them out. And they're going to do something. They're going to throw up some kind of bluff. They're going. They don't keep themselves quiet. No, they don't. They don't. They will show themselves. Well, Jesus eventually cast the demons out of this man. There in Mark 1. But it was after the demons were the ones who, they were the first ones to speak up. The first ones to show themselves. So we have, we have people who, and one thing I will agree with, if you have people who don't like you, mm. It's not you they don't like. If there are people who cause you problems and all this kind of stuff, believe me, it's not you they don't like. No. It's the Holy Spirit inside you they don't like. That's why they do this. Mm-hmm. That's why they come against you. Yep. I got that too. That one I agree with. It's something I see a lot. It's not you. It's the Holy Spirit inside you. That's what draws them out. <clears throat> so they get yeah. angry at you. Yes. They get very angry at you. Very they, angry. They, will, they will do things to you through people. Things that you are totally shocked about. They, they will mm-hmm. cut people off from you if they can. Uh, they will make up things about you. They will find excuses. Yeah. The, people, the, the people that harbor these things will find excuses. As to why you should not be around or why they don't want, or they will gossip about you. They will talk poorly of you. Uh, they will say things about you that's not even true. They will find the smallest things, especially if it's family. So you have to, re- I mean, family, friends, they don't care. So, And they yeah. will taunt you. Oh, yes, they will. They'll taunt they you. They'll poke you at either. you. They will do things to get you to come out of... <laughs> Come out of who you are in Christ and fall into the flesh. Now, so you got to remember this. And this is something I saw here a while back, and I truly believe that. I totally agree with this and this fact. The flesh could care less. Completely and totally care less. Why? Because it's not going to eternity with you to be with Jesus. We have to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Okay, so the flesh that we live in, which is the flesh is the sin. So the sinful nature has a tendency to want to do what sin does or whatever pleases us or whatever makes us happy, where we fight not against flesh and blood, but against powers and against rulers and against, you know, the darkness, all the, all the principalities, these spirits, our bodies, our souls, and our spirit live forever and ever and ever somewhere. Our body, our flesh is made of dirt. Remember, he made us out of dirt. From dust you come to dust you go. That when the sin stepped in, we became dust, dirt. We were created out of dirt to live forever, but the dirt now will sinfully disappear. So our flesh could care less what we do. That's why we fight against the flesh. And the enemy will come at you and poke you in your flesh. You know, you may be strong in spirit. At times, we're human. We make these mistakes. And it is difficult. It is a battle every day. We have to take our cross every day. And, and we, there are times, I mean, I, have, I am number one. I fail. I do. Just like Tom failed. 
Yes, they do. Why Demons not? do come to distract you from the truth. You're walking out your calling. You're loving others. Yep. Why does he do that? To send you the opposite direction. He will throw things into your life that you think, well, I should do this. No, you shouldn't. You better pray about it. should have prayed about a few things here a while back myself, but I didn't. Why? Well, because, you know, uh, I'll just say it had to do with something that was I felt was important. I, I don't even want to say it because this is live and it goes out where people can hear it. But there, it was something that a lot of people would have done thought you were doing the right thing. I mean, most people, even other Christians would have. Didn't pray about it at all. Not one bit. And it created, the enemy came in and said, I'm going to poke you, I'm going to poke you, I'm going to poke you. And boy, he did a job of it. Mm -hmm. Did a job of it on both of us. And, and he'll do it to you too. Yes. Yes, ma'am. He will. He'll do it to everyone he gets half a chance to. I understand something that more so now than I did before. I always, you know, reading the Word of God, and you'll have to look it up. I didn't come to bring peace, but I came to bring a sword. Yeah. You need to look that up. You need to pray over that, because I'm going to tell you something. Family or people Yes, ma'am, he sure will. Sorry, I stopped and read what Michelle put up there. Y'all can see that. The thing is this. He brings a sword. And family may not necessarily be blood. But I will tell you, the blood of Jesus is what makes your family. The blood of Jesus is what makes the people that, that love you. The blood of Jesus is that that covers all. And when I say all, I mean all. Yeah, we look, we've done it too, Kelly. Mm -hmm. We've done it too. And it's because because emotion it's God tough. gave us emotion. It tells us to be slow, slow to anger, slow to speak. Man, that's slow tough. That's yeah, it's tough slow one. to a lot of things. That's a tough, tough, tough one right there. <laughs> but there's a reason for that. And see the thing is is the <laughs> enemy will distract you from the truth and he will cause you to try to walk in failure instead of victory. I'm not learning this from a friend of mine. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to say this and I know that they're going to chuckle. I'm going to say this because it does work. You know what, Satan? I'm going to give you notice today. You're right. Everything that you have taken to the throne room of God, you're right about. I have failed. I did do those things and I did make those mistakes. But you know what? I got news for you. The blood of Jesus covers me and the grace that God has given covers me. So you can accuse me. You can stand before the throne room and you can tell that enemy that I am worth, tell God that I am worthless. But I'm telling you the blood of Jesus because Jesus died for me. I'm not worthless. I'm worth more than diamonds. I'm worth more than gold. And I'm beautiful in the sight of God. I am dearly loved and wonderfully made. I am precious in his sight. And before God ever, ever, he knew me before I was ever formed in my mother's womb. So you know what? You take your junk and you get on out of here and you go back to those dry and arid places where you came from. Because I am a daughter of the king of all kings. And you can just keep right on accusing me. But I don't care. I don't care. So that's what you do. You stand and wherever that pain is, you just pour it out and you tell the Lord, I'm sorry. And you stand before him and you tell the enemy to take his stuff and go on. Take your junk and get on out of here. Because your home is a place of peace. Your home is a place of sanctity. Your home is a place where God rules. Not the enemy. Oh, he's going to come in the door, I promise you. And he will do things, I promise you. But you have the authority. And we forget that because we get distracted. We get distracted and sent on trips 
that we never, God never intended for us to go down. It's kind of like when you have children or grandchildren or cousins or nieces or nephews. And you see them getting around the plug. You go, don't touch that, honey, because you can get hurt. God says the same thing. Don't do these things for a reason. It's not that I'm trying to create a rule that's terrible for you. I'm trying to protect you. I'm trying to protect you from the enemy. I'm trying to protect you from the flesh. I'm trying to protect you from this world that was not created to be this way in the first place. I'm trying to protect you. No, I'm crying. Don't do that. Can't see me in now. <laughs> I'm behind the ring. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm crying. I don't want nobody to see my tears. No, yeah, you are, aren't you? I'm behind the ring. Oh, yeah. See? Oh. Well, <laughs> I tried. The thing is, we have to remember that without Jesus and without prayer, without praising and using the word, standing on the word of God, using the word, the scripture, use the scripture, stand on it, use the scripture, use it, stand on it, don't worry about it, you get on there and you you, you use the word, that actually you should pray scripture because it because it, it kindles your affection for the Lord, it, it creates, it helps you pray confidently, Com Lord, so me. that we boldly come before the throne room of God. And it's truthful. The word of God is truthful. The enemy wants to hold us over all of our guilt and all of our shame of all of the things that we've done throughout our lives and guilt us in it so that we come cowardly before the throne room. But we come boldly to the throne room of God because we know that Jesus has paid the price for us. When God looks at us, God sees Jesus. He don't see me, he sees Jesus. He don't see you, he sees Jesus. That's what the covering of Jesus' blood does for us. And going back to saying something else, one other thing. And we mentioned something about why would they come at me? Okay, well, the one thing is the Bible tells us that the, that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. What happened to Peter and John and James when they went to Gethsemane with Jesus? They fell asleep, right? Why do they fall asleep? Because the flesh is weak. Because the flesh is the sinful part of us. The flesh is what we have to learn to rein in. But how do we do that? We do it by praying scripture and focusing on scripture. And the reason when we focus on praying on scripture, you're reading it. And you can pray it as you read it. Psalms. I say this a lot. Psalms. David was a praying man. He was a praying man. That's why God said, David is a man after my own heart. Why? Because he used the scripture all the time. He used scripture all the time. He was always praying scripture. And that's right, Michelle. The word defeats Satan. Yeah. It defeats the enemy's lies. It defeats everything that he tries to set up against us. Do we work in the flesh? Yeah, the, the flesh tries to take off and go, well, I'm going to go do this. Oh, boy. It's kind of like, don't strap in on the roller coaster and see where you wind up. Don't, don't put the seatbelt on and ride that ride. Where are you going to go? That's what the enemy wants. He wants to take us for a roller coaster ride, like Tom was talking about. Prayer. He started out talking about prayer in the middle of the night. Well, that's what we're talking about now. Prayer. Right. It may start in the middle of the night. We may pray all day long. The Bible, Peter, or Paul said, don't pray without ceasing. Well, people get this in their head. They get this really, well, I, got, I can't get time to get on my knees all the time. I got time. No, you're right. There's things that we do in the flesh, but we can still praise and pray and worship. You got to find the time for it. You know, a lot of people say, well, you got to get up early in the morning and do this. Well, Jesus did it at night, too. I mean, you know, he got up early in the morning. He disappeared during the day. He did it at night. I mean, the guys fell asleep, so that was nighttime. Yeah. It, whenever you get that opportunity, whenever <clears throat> you can, we live in a busy world. We have jobs. The world requires us to pay bills. The world requires us to do certain things. And as long as we're not doing anything against God, we got to do what we got to do to survive, make our bills, or, or buy our groceries. But there's a time, and you can find time. Even if you got to stick it in your ear while you're walking around, listen to the Word of God. 
Put your phone in your back pocket, find you some scripture and stick it in your back pocket, stick something in your ear and go about your business. Nobody knows what you're listening to anyhow. Doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah, I, I guess I, but remember, it, and it, let's see, it's, let me look, it says, Matthew 26, 41. Look it up, y'all. That's the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Seriously. And look, we knew that Peter, James, and John were amazing people for the Lord. We know that. And we can be amazing for the Lord. God's going to use us. And do we have to go through things to learn lessons? Yep. A little Miss Stubborn here. Hard-headed. Oh, yeah. God's allowed me to go through quite a few things because... I am, I mean, God created me to be stubborn and be able to stand up for his purpose. Mm -hmm. Not for Michelle's purpose, but for his purpose. Mm -hmm. That's why he created me that way. That's why. Michelle threw up in Psalms 103, 1 through 5, put so many wicked schemes of the enemy to fight, to flight. When you stand on the truth, truth of God's word and speak it out loud, the enemy flees and takes his sickness, lack, poverty, fear with him. We must stand firm. We do. The Bible tells us to stand firm. When you put on your armor, what does it say? Having done all that you can do, stand. Stand, stand, stand. stand. Yep. We do love you guys, every one of you. Mm -hmm. We love it when you come in, and I don't, one day I'll give everybody a hug, whether it be here on this earth or in heaven. Oh, yeah. And we will know one another, and we will know. Has it been difficult lately? Sure. We all go through trials and tribulations, but you know what? They suck when you're going through it, and I'm going to point blank and say it. They suck when you go through it. But you know, after you go through it, you learn a lot. And you learn not to make that mistake again. At least you hope you. At least you're the smart kid and, and don't do it again. I know I'm in the background, Ned, so you get to see handsome. <laughs> you get to see his face. It's just because I'm crying off and on, and I don't like people to see me cry. Of course, I like to see me cry again. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we call each other mom and dad. Mm -hmm. It's because the kids. We've done it for years. And when we get the grandkids here, it's mom and pa or me and pa pa. Yeah. It's because we're old. I don't know. I got now to where I got kids and grandkids all now call me papa. My name changed over the years. I guess it's because my hair turned white or something now. And papa or pop. But anyway. Right, mom or Mimi. <laughs> yeah, but. No, we love you. Yeah. And what I was going to say, you have to get away to yourself and the Lord. At times, we, yes, corporately, by all means, as husband and wife, yes, together, by all means, never like that. But there's also, and even I don't, as in one of the Corinthians somewhere, Paul said, husband and wife remain together always, except for, except for a mutually agreed time. upon time to step aside. Fasting. For fasting and prayer. So even, yes, husbands and wives should pray together. Most definitely. But there still comes a time when you can mutually agree for a matter of a few hours. Maybe it's for the day. Maybe it's for the week. You step aside. You separate for a time. Mutually agree upon time of prayer. But then he says, quickly come back together. So that you are not tempted. What? what? So, you know, we have to have our personal time with just me and the Lord as well. But you can fast and pray with your husband. Yeah. Yes. You can fast yes, and yes, pray yes, yes. with your wife. You can do a fast in the house, in the home. You can do those things. mutually agree to most Definitely. fast and pray together. Because remember, it says one takes how many to flight? Somebody want to throw that up? When you pray, one takes how many to flight? 
the way when I throw it up there? No. And one and a half too. How many does it take to flee? You know, and I don't remember. I've seen it before, and it's Thank true. You. you can take one horse and hook a sled and some weight. Yes, ma'am. On that horse, one horse, and that one horse. I just pull a number out of there because I don't remember the number that they say. A common, the average yes, draft yeah. horse can pull, like, say, 1,000 pounds. Say so the average draft horse can pull 1,000 pounds. You take two draft horses, fasten them, so hook them side by side, mm -hmm. and you would mm -hmm. automatically think, okay, now I got two horses here. If one can pull 1,000, I'm going to take two, and I'm going to put them together, and they're going to pull 2,000. Nope. No, man, they just idle off with the more. 2,000 pounds. You put another thousand pounds on there now you're up to three thousand pounds and then they're still pulling see so if we multiply that if we so if we when we come together mm -hmm. that's like i grab my i speak it all the time about corporate prayer together and carrying each other's needs and being there for each other i totally now i speak it all the time because we do need and especially today man we got we need to be one mind one accord i mean the church was praying peter was in prison Fixing to be killed probably the next day. And the church was corporately together praying. And here come an angel of the Lord, opened the door and walked Peter out of that prison. I believe, fully, I believe it was the corporate prayer of the church. Their petitions to God, which is what God calls God to bring the angel to lay Peter out of that prison. So, and I have to tell you, but there comes the time when we need to spend the time. Just me and the Lord. In order that we can help others, help our family, lead our family in the right directions. So don't neglect yourself in prayer. And then, I, you know, it says here in scriptures, there are times Jesus left away in the morning. And it says at times that we would go away in the late in the late in the evening. So like I said earlier, you don't have to mark your calendar and abide by that set time once a week, once a month, whatever. Don't do that. That's being religious. Jesus didn't do it religiously. Sometimes he would walk away in the morning. Sometimes he would walk away in the evening. But we need to spend time just me and the Lord as well as we need to spend time as brothers and sisters corporately as the church and pray. It's just we need to spend time corporately together as husband and wife and pray. So don't neglect your time of just you and the Lord. We do that together as well. It's and don't ever forget praying scripture is very important mm -hmm. because it teaches you how to express yourself appropriately. It teaches you how to do things correctly in the word and how to pray correctly. And you can like Psalms one forty five one through three. I will exalt you, <coughs> my God and my King. Bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. We learn to praise through psalms. We learn to pray about problems. We learn to pray throughout the whole Bible. In Nehemiah, when Israel was under rule, was it not Syria, the Syrians, or the, or the Persians? The Persians, the Persians yeah. Nehemiah was a Tom and I talked about this. Nehemiah was the one that went and redid the rebuilt Jerusalem. Rebuilt Jerusalem. But how did he get that done? Because being under slavery or under rule of another country, and they didn't like them anyhow. Well, how did they get that done? Prayer, corporate prayer. Look it up. Yeah. Corporate prayer. It was corporate prayer that got through them. It was corporate prayer then praying that got them through where they needed to go. Corporate prayer. So you see. 
1,000, 10,000. We need to pray. We need to for, not forget and we need to not be distracted. Yeah, even read Nehemiah if you haven't ever read the book of Nehemiah. It's a pretty cool book. It is a very good book and a lot of truth to it. The enemies would come. I mean, the other people now, how I many here they've done, you know, kings, I believe it was King Cyrus of Persia, said, all right, go back and rebuild Jerusalem and you and your people can return back there. Even though you're still going to be under us, you still go back and live in your homeland. Well, these other people, the Assyrians, the Moabites, whoever, or all of those people that were there at the time, they didn't want, they knew the power of God could work through Israel. They knew how God worked through Israel. He, they knew that once they rebuilt Jerusalem and so forth, that they would become a force to reckon with. So these other enemies, their previous enemies, the people of the other nations, would come against them. So here you have these people there in Jerusalem rebuilding the city walls and all of that. They would hold a sword in one hand and a trowel in the other. You know, the people, watchmen standing on the walls, watching for these enemies that were trying to come to prevent from Jerusalem being built up. And that's the way we are today. We have watch. We need watchmen on the walls to be watching because there's enemies coming against us. But yet we all need to be prepared to fight, even as we're building. When situations come, we pray. And Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for being with us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love and kindness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your example of Jesus, the example that Jesus lived, not just the examples that are written down on tablets of stone, but the examples that Jesus lived for us to see through the life of a person. Yes, Jesus was God. Jesus was God incarnate. God with us. Emmanuel. That's the example of a person. A human life. That had one concern and one concern only. And that was being about our Father's business. So Father, help increase within us this desire to where we don't focus on the things of this world. We don't worry about the things of this world. We have one thing in our mind, a one-track mind. And that one track and on our mind is being about our Father's business. And all we do, thus, as it is written, as I've mentioned, whether it be in word or in deed, we do all we do for the glory of God. It's all for your glory, God. You are the author, the creator, the finisher of our faith. It's all for you. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You'll never leave us and you'll never forsake us. The Alpha and the Omega. So in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So, say something. Say something. When I was telling you that we need to pray the word of God, I'm going to read something to you guys if that's okay. Uh, if y'all got one. Ha, 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 ha. There's more than one way to skin a cat. And I got you there. I'm, okay, I'm going to read something to you guys. Oh. Y'all okay with this? Yay, nay. Y'all got something to do? Okay, here goes. Um, I'm not real good with word, these guys' names, sorry. I'm going to back up here. I'm reading, the, I'm reading this. Then the Levites, and there was Jeshua, Kedemiel, Benai. This is Nehemiah 9, 5 through 37. And Hashbron, me, I can't say these guys' names, sorry said stand up and bless the lord now this is an example of how we are to pray this is scriptural 
okay? This is a scriptural type prayer. And this will give you an idea as to what I was talking about. This is really cool. Okay. Stand up and bless the Lord your God from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessings and praise. You are the Lord, you alone. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, and all their hosts, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You preserve all of them, and the hosts of heaven worship you. You are the Lord, the God who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldeans and gave him the name Abraham. You found his heart faithful before you, and you made him the covenant to give to his offspring in the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, and the Jebusite, and the Gibrizite. You have kept your promise, for you are righteous, and you saw the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, and heard their cry at the Red Sea, and performed signs and wonders against Pharaoh, and all his servants, and all the people of his land. For you knew that they acted arrogantly against our fathers, and you made a name for yourself, as it is to this day. And you divided the sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on dry land. And you cast their pursuers into the depths, as a stone into mighty waters. By a pillar of cloud you led them in the day, and by a pillar of fire in the night, to light for them the way in which they should go. You came down on Mount Sinai, and spoke with them from heaven, and gave them right rules and, and true laws, good statutes and commandments. And you made known to them your holy Sabbath and commanded them commandments and statutes and a law by Moses your servant. You gave them bread from heaven for their hunger and brought water for them out of the rock for their thirst. And you told them to go into possession, possess the land and that you had sworn to give them. But they and our fathers acted presumptuously and stiffened their necks. And did not obey your commandments. They refused to obey and were not mindful of the wonders that you performed among them. But they stiffed in their necks and appointed to leader, a leader to return to their slavery in Egypt. But you are a God ready to forgive, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. And did not forsake them. Even when they had made for themselves a golden calf and said, This is your God who brought you out of Egypt and had committed great blasphemies. In your great mercies you did not forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud to lead them in the way did not depart from them by day, nor the pillar by, of fire by night to light for them the way by which they should go. You gave your good spirit to instruct them and did not withhold your manna from their mouth and gave them water for their thirst. Forty years you sustained them in the wilderness, and they lacked nothing. Now, if you can continue to read this, you see what I'm talking about as far as prayer? You see how it works? That's what we do. We ask forgiveness. We go forward. We see what we've done. That is probably one of the best scripture prayers that these priests were talking about. What God did for them. Where it went, how it became, and how they became. Okay, so let's say this. Father, will you please forgive me for being a stiff-necked person? You sent your son to die on the cross for me, to shed his blood for me. And I have done things in the past, and I have done things recently, Father, out of your commandments, not listening to your word, not following your commandments, not coming to you, in prayer but working through the flesh which is not what you have commanded you took care of your people and you grafted me in I am grateful for your grace and your forgiveness forgive me for being so stiff necked and looking the wrong direction that's how we pray Okay, I need to turn that because I'm going to cry again. Please. <laughs> okay. I love you guys. I'm done. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We're done. Just read that Nehemiah 9, 5 through 37, and use it as a model. It'll help you. I promise.
Well, anyway, you guys. I believe summer's over with, finally. Tell me I'm goofy, I've got rabbits. It ain't. Huh? Tell me I'm goofy, I've got rabbits. No, uh, you got rabbits? We're gonna have rabbits. Well, yeah, we're gonna have rabbits. We got a rabbit cage this week. Now we gotta get some rabbits. But anyway, uh, I guess I hope you guys enjoy your day. We got a nice, cool day. Crisp, crisp this morning. It's gonna warm up a little bit more today, but still not gonna be hot. Nice looking forecast ahead of us. Man, thank the Lord this hot, hot summer's over with for now. But anyway, you guys, we love each and every single one of you. And we pray for you all constantly. All of you. Even the ones who are not in here live and ones who watch later on. You know, there's some who don't watch, you know, I, I get it. You know, you want a church, you got a church that locally you go to. That's fine, that's great. It's good. I'm glad you do. We love you guys. No, we're not. Yeah, I think we're supposed to get to the 80s today. Yesterday was in the 70s. 42 this morning. My little dog didn't want to go outside until I threatened him with his hoodie. And then, boy, he went out the door. But anyway. Anyway, today's the day the Lord's <laughs> made. And we shall and will be rejoicing in it. So until the next time, God bless you all. And let's just keep each other lifted in prayer. Yeah. Look around here and see who's been here. Gloria, add Kelly to your prayer list. Kelly, add Gloria to your prayer list. Add Audrey to your prayer list. You guys, we all we all pray for each other. Add us to your prayer list. We love y'all. That's what we're here. We're all one body. Whether we know each other personally, we know each other spiritually. God bless you all. And until next time.